the book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Tonight I want to talk about the false prophets. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Jesus said, watch out for those false prophets. He said, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. That's Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Matthew 7, 15. He said, verse 16, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? He said, even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. He said, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruits, you shall know them. Now let's talk a little bit about these prophets. This is the age, this is the hour, this is the time and the season for prophets. And whether we like it or not, the prophetic gift, the prophetic giftings, the prophetic anointing, the prophetic ministry, the prophetic office will become much more prominent in this season and in this time. In fact, we are the generation that is pushing towards the prophetic outpouring. We are on the fringes, if not have entered into the trickle of the prophetic anointing, because there is going to be a greater outpouring of prophetic grace than we than what we are seeing today. There will come a time when the church will have so many prophetic people prophesying accurately that we will wonder what is going on. Joel prophesied it, that in the last days, it shall come to pass that God is going to pour out his spirit and sons and daughters are going to prophesy. It means that God is going to give access into the prophetic realm. The church is going to get access into the dimensions of the prophetic realm. The church is going to get access into the, the, the dimensions of, of knowledge and information, which is what the prophetic giftings give us access to and so much more. And so if that's the case, then the enemy is going to do his best to try and infiltrate the church before that outpouring happens, while that outpouring is taking place, and try to corrupt uh, the people of God so that they will not be able to discern what is true and what is not what is false and what is true. And so we have to now arm ourselves with knowledge, with understanding, so that we are not fooled by what the enemy sends as wolves in sheep clothing. Listen, we can know, Jesus said, a false prophet by virtue of their fruit by virtue of their work what do they produce what do they say what are the things that they do we can know them by their fruit the fruit that the holy spirit produces will last but the fruit that the 
enemy produces will not last. It is corrupt. It will rot. It will fade away. And so we want to dive into some things tonight. But before I do, let me say that the prophet is a human being. The prophet is a fallible human being. And he is capable of delivering a message in a wrong way. Let me, let me begin with that. The prophet and the novice prophet, meaning the beginning prophet, the beginner prophet, or the beginning individual who is in, using the prophetic gift, uh, 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 just starting to use the gift, must be given opportunity to grow and to mature. We give everybody else opportunity to grow. We give everybody else opportunity to mature. But when it comes to the prophet, you cannot dare make a mistake because the moment you make a mistake, everybody is at your neck with a sword and with a knife to give you a lateral cut and to tell you bleed out and die because you made a mistake. Listen, it's as if we don't get an opportunity to even cry out and, and, and say, look, we have, we have made a mistake here or we have made a mistake there. And so what is happening is that because of the pressure that is being put on prophets and the prophetic gift, you find that either those who have genuine prophetic gifts are afraid to come to the forefront, yeah, because there are genuine prophetic gifts. I've seen genuine prophetic gifts in people. And they are afraid to come to the forefront because if they come to the forefront, they will cut their necks if they ever said E for H or H for E. I'm telling you, they will cut their throats. So we have to be, as children of God, patient with the development of the prophetic ministry. Be patient. But while we are being patient, we must also be intuitive and discerning because we can be patient with the wrong thing. We can be patient with wolves and waiting for wolves to grow up into, into big dogs. And by the time they grow up into big dogs, that's, that's, it becomes more deadly to get rid of them because the fight will be greater. But God can give us the eye to discern the difference between a wolf and a sheep, whether they are babies or whether they are fully grown or in the process of growing. Now, due to the, the fact that every prophet at some point will be a novice and every individual who is a prophetic individual at some point, you will be a novice. You will make mistakes. Don't think that you won't make mistakes. You will make mistakes. But you see, here is the problem. We preachers, we don't like to talk about the fact that we make mistakes. We do make mistakes. We are not gods and we are not infallible. We are fallible human beings. And so every prophet and every prophetic person and every prophetic gift and every prophetic ministry and every prophetic anointing must come under some level of mentorship that will help to develop their gift and character. In fact, it is the Holy Spirit who develops your gift, but it is men who help you to develop your character. The Holy Spirit develops your character by using men. And so what happens here is that when your character is developed, it will safeguard you and ensure that the weaknesses and the flaws of our human nature will be quickly identified and dealt with so that whatever message that we are given to release, it is not tainted when it is delivered. Now, a tainted message can happen in several ways. A tainted message can happen when the messenger is ministering out of hurt 
it is easy to detect hurt. If you're a prophetic person, if you're a prophetic individual, it is easy to detect hurt when someone is ministering. Your message can be tainted when there is unforgiveness. You can listen to the message. It is always about issues that the person has gone through and things that people have done to them. And some way, somehow it finds its way into the ministry, ministering or the message. A message can be tainted when there is impurity of heart, impurity of mind. The person is dealing with issues that need to be removed, that need to be cut out of their system. Messages can be tainted because of spiritual weakness, immaturity in biblical wisdom and understanding of the scriptures, as well as immature character. And so it is important that we prophetic people must first and foremost recognize that we are human beings. We are not some spiritual elite. We are not angels. Don't make anybody fool you. You are not an angel. Even if your husband or your wife call you an angel, they are lying to you. You are not an angel. You are a human being. You were born of a woman. You are flesh and blood. You are not a god. You are not the right hand of God. You are not the mind of God. You are only a mouthpiece that can be picked up and put down. Uh -huh. So don't think that you are more better. You are more uh, 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 worth anything more than any other of God's children. You are not. Mm -mm. We are servants of the living God. We are human beings. And we hear from God when God wants to speak to us. And so arrogance must never clothe the prophet or the prophetic minister or those who have prophetic gifts. Arrogance must never clothe us. The moment we have arrogance, that's it. We are headed down a very dangerous road. And so we have to be careful that we check our attitude, our character, our behavior before we begin to minister to others in any serious and deep way. Today, you find that everybody, once they come into ministry, they are a prophet and apostle. <laughs> the moment they come into ministry, prophet, the moment you see them uh, do something, apostle, and you wonder to yourself, is this how this thing goes? No, that's not how it goes at all. Listen to me, it takes years. It takes decades to build the character of a prophet. You can get a prophetic gift right now, immediately as we speak. The gift of prophecy can come on you. The gift of word of knowledge can come on you. The gift of discerning of spirits can come on you. The gift of word of wisdom can come on you. Just like that, at the snap of a finger, at the sound of our voice, at the laying on of hands, you can receive it. But hear me, it takes years to develop your character, to develop your attitude, to develop your behavior as a prophet. It takes years. So do not let anybody fool you and tell you that, oh, you have gift now. You can go and start a church. You can go and start a ministry. You can go and do this. You can go and do that. No, 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 no. It takes years of process. It takes years of being in the presence of God to understand his voice, to understand how he speaks to you, to understand how to deliver a message. It takes years. Now, prophets are real. There are some people who want to believe that prophets ended with the Old Testament and that it ended with the disciples and the apostles of Jesus Christ. If that is the case, then please remove the book of Ephesians out of the Bible. That's not the case. Prophets are still around. And guess what? You don't get to choose who be a prophet and who don't be a prophet. You don't get to choose 
who get the gift and who doesn't get the gift. Because some of us would love to disregard the ones that God has chosen and accept the ones that they want. And today, this is exactly what is happening, that the church has reached a stage. Oh, my God. The church has reached a stage where they are choosing who gets what and who doesn't get what. The church has reached a stage where they are so arrogant that they are disregarding those whom God sends and accepting those who sent themselves or who was sent by the devil. Prophets must be received. Prophets must be honored and prophets must be listened to. Matthew 10, 41, Matthew 13, 57, Deuteronomy 18, verse 19. These are some passages that you can look at in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 57. It says, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor. In other words, a prophet has honor. Is the, neg is the negative part Jesus is speaking about. Why? Because he's without honor in his own country and in his own house. You see, that's the problem. In our own country and in our own house, we have no honor. And you wonder to yourself, why is it that our countries, our islands, our nations are not seeing the glory of God? The answer is in verse 58. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. What were they unbelievers in? They were unbelievers in the fact that Jesus was a prophet. And they were offended in the fact that this Jesus that grew up amongst them was a prophet. They couldn't give him honor. They couldn't receive him. They couldn't. Why couldn't they receive him? Because they thought that because he was, he grew up amongst them, then he was just like them. And so this is one of the reasons why our nations are the way they are. It is not that God has not given prophets in the nation, but the church has chosen who they want and who they don't want. If you do not receive the ones that God has sent to you, forget the mighty works. There will be works, but not mighty works. There will be some things happening, but not the mighty things that we need to see happen. And if we want to see the mighty works of God, the mighty things of God, learn how to receive your own prophets. You see, people... Take this scripture, a prophet is not without honor in his own country, to justify not honoring their prophets. Mm -hmm. To justify not honoring those whom God has sent. We're not talking about those who come and blabber their mouth and say all kinds of things. No, prophets come with word and works. Prophets come with word and works. In other words, when the prophet comes to you, there will be revelation and there will be demonstration. Let me say it again. When the prophet comes to you, there will be revelation and there will be demonstration. And so if we are not willing to receive the prophets that have been sent to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, you may get revelation. But you won't get demonstration. And if you get demonstration, it will not be the demonstration of God. It will be demonstration of some kind of spirits. And a lot of us today, because we don't have any relationship with God, guess what is happening? We don't know how to discern between the true prophet 
and the false prophet. We don't know. So, if one is receiving, listening to, and honoring a prophet, what is he receiving? Or who is he receiving? He is receiving God. He's listening to God. He's honoring God. I didn't say he's honoring the man. The man or the woman sent to you was sent by God. And they bear the message of God. They bear the grace of God. They bear the spirit of God. And so your honoring them is indirectly honoring God. Because he is God's messenger. So in accepting a prophet... It comes with rewards and blessings from heaven. Every true prophet comes with rewards. Every true prophet. Every true prophet comes with rewards. If this prophet is truly a messenger of God, then imagine the repercussions if this man was rejected. Because if we reject God's messenger, then how do you want to accept or receive or access God's blessing? When you reject a prophet, you are rejecting a blessing. Come on, let me say it again. When you reject a prophet, you are rejecting a blessing. So let me give you an example. Three men were sent to visit Abraham's tent. They were angels, of course, and they were on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah. What if Abraham did not receive them? Do you know what happened to Abraham when he received these three men and the prophetic words that came from their mouth? One year later, nine months later, Sarah gave birth. Hmm. Nine months later, Sarah gave birth. Forget Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah dealt with its, with, with, with its own self. Yeah? Sodom had to check its own sin. But these three men, they came and they, 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 they were passing Abraham. Abraham discerned that these were not ordinary men. Can you discern the people who are not ordinary around you? The people who are on assignment from heaven? Can you discern? You see, there are times when a prophet might not be sent to you, but your discernment of the grace, your discernment of the anointing, your discernment of the spirit they carry can cause you to attract something that wasn't meant for you yet. Come on now. It can open up things for you that possibly would take another five years, another 10 years. But because you were so keen to discern, so keen to identify, so quick to notice who is among you, then some things can open up for you. Some things can unlock for you. So I believe one of the prayers you need to pray tonight is, Lord, give me the anointing, the grace to discern who is amongst me, who is around me. Give me the grace to discern. Give me the ability to discern grace. Because some of us, we are carrying some anointings. But because... People are not discerning what is on us. Nothing is unlocking for them. Nothing. And we might go somewhere else. And because the people there discern what is on us, then things begin to unlock for them because of the grace that is upon our lives. What are you discerning in this season? What are you discerning? Now, Prophets must be tested. Listen to me. You could be an angel from heaven. We are going to test you. We are going to test you. We don't know you. You didn't grow up around us. We didn't watch your grace grow. We were not a part of your development. So if you come, we are going to test you. We never said we are going to be suspicious. Because some people are very suspicious of everybody. Even when the thing is plain before them, they are still suspicious. No, we're not talking about suspicion. 
We're talking about testing to establish the veracity of who you are. Are you truly a messenger of Jesus? So there are certain things we are going to look for. We're going to look for your message. Is it an alignment with the scriptures? Does it align with the principles and truth of scripture? We're going to listen to your testimony. How did you come to know Jesus Christ? What testimony do you have about Jesus Christ? We're going to test your gift. When did you get this gift? Did you get it before you come to church? Or did you get it after you gave your life to Christ? We're going to do some testing because we need to know what we are opening up ourselves to. We need to know who, who mentored you. Who was instrumental in discipling you? Did you go through any kind of biblical discipleship? We need to know. We need to know because we need to know what are we opening up ourselves to? Because the moment you open yourselves to a prophet, you have opened your spirit. Your spirit is the most secret place of you. It is like opening up your bedroom and then saying to the person, don't just stop at my bedroom, come into my bathroom. <laughs> it's, it's the most intimate, secret place. And imagine you open yourself to that and become corrupted by a corrupt spirit. Become corrupted by a wolf. Become corrupted by a snake. Then everything now inside of you becomes affected. And so it is important. Moses gave a very strong warning concerning prophets. He said in Deuteronomy 18, 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously and you shall not be afraid of him what does that imply that prophets must be tested by the manifestation of what they have said to prove whether or not it is true or whether or not it is actually coming from god so a prophet must not become arrogant when his message is brought under the microscope of god's word if he speaks not according to this word don't listen Don't listen. That's what the Bible is saying. If what he's saying doesn't come to pass, he's not a man of God. I know you'll be asking all kinds of questions and all kinds of things. What about the conditional prophecies and all of that? Okay, just hold your horses a little bit. We're talking about men who constantly prophesy, but nothing they have ever prophesied come to pass. They're just talking, but there is no record. Nowhere of anything ever said manifesting anywhere nothing and they want you to be afraid of them because of their mouth because of their prestige because of what they have and what they possess no 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 we will not be afraid we will not now we do not have any right to disrespect or handle prophets with disdain because it can take time for a message that is spoken by a prophet to come to pass many of the prophecies that isaiah gave have not yet come to pass there are still hundreds of prophecies that the prophets in the old testament gave and they have not come to pass. Then do we say that because these prophecies have not come to pass in their lifetime, that they are false prophets? Absolutely not. We have to be careful. But certainly there are things that the prophet will prophesy in his lifetime that will come to pass, that will allow us to know that those things that have not yet come to pass will certainly do. Because the truth of this prophetic individual has been already verified. So 
in establishing the voice of a prophet in the land. God will sometimes use the prophet to prophesy of events and give revelations of situations that come to pass very quickly. And he sometimes uses the prophet to perform wonders and miracles that will establish the authority of that prophet so that people will know that he has been chosen by God to be a messenger and a mouthpiece of his spirit. But what do we have today? We have a lot of people prophesying, but nothing they say comes to pass. You see, there is a difference between prophecy and word of knowledge. And a lot of individuals are functioning in word of knowledge. Word of knowledge gives you information about things that have happened or possibly things that are currently happening. And guess what? News flash for you. The devils know the two. <laughs> they know history. And they are aware of what is happening to you now. But let me tell you what they don't know. They don't know future. The only future they know. Is that a day is coming. When Jesus is going to throw them into hell. That's the only future they know. They don't know anything else. And so what you are seeing today is that many individuals who call themselves prophets, they are functioning in the realm of word of knowledge, history. They know a lot about a lot, but nothing about what is to come. And they can mesmerize you with information that you already know, but can't tell you nothing about what is to come. Why? Because they are not prophets. Simple. They're not prophets. The prophet of God will be able, by the grace of the Spirit of God, not by his own spirit, not by his own self, but by the grace of the Spirit of God to tell you about things to come. And when he begins to tell you about things to come, be sure to know that God will let you experience those things that are being spoken by his Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit of God does not lie. Now, we are cautioned to beware of false prophets. And I want to go here so that you can now understand the true prophets. We are cautioned to watch out for those who claim to be prophets, but they are not. And there are two groups. One, those who claim to be a prophet, but were never called to be so. They are imposters. Nothing these people say will have any impact. Nothing. And they will either succumb to the attacks of the spirit world or be stoned by individuals who find them out to be liars. They are imposters. They don't last long. Then there is a second group. And this is where the danger lies because this is the dangerous group. They actually have a prophetic gift. They actually have some kind of gift. And these people fit into two groups. One set does not belong to and were never connected to God. These are the ones that have familiar spirits. And then there is another set who were once connected to God, but have gone in the way of the world. Now, let me focus on the ones who are no longer connected to God. Balaam was one such individual. 
And I'm going to call them the Balaam prophets, the Balaam P-R-O-F-I-T-S, the Balaam prophets. Now, there are a few things we want to examine so that you can tell who are these people? Who are these people? Now, before we get there, one of the prayers I want you to pray is, Lord, protect my spirit from imposters. Protect my spirit from imposters. Protect me from people who claim to be of you, but they are not. Give me discernment. Give me eyes to see. Give me spirit to discern in this hour. Lord, those who are of you and those who are not of you. Shield me, Holy Ghost. Protect my soul from imposters in this season. In the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray for yourself. Lord, protect me from imposters. Protect me from those who are posing to be from you, but they are not. Protect me, Lord, from those who claim to be prophets. But Lord, they are imposters. They check Facebook and they check TikTok and they check Instagram. And they do research about us before they come to us to mesmerize us with information they have researched on us. But Lord, they were never in your presence because they don't know the way to your presence. Father, protect us from these imposters in the name of Jesus. Reveal their lying schemes. Reveal their lying mechanisms. Whatever they are doing, Lord God, to fool your people. Holy Ghost, reveal it, expose it, and expose them in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, whatever they are, whatever they are doing, in whatever country they are located, Spirit of the living God, expose the imposters tonight. We call forth now for the light of God to begin to shine upon every house, upon every church, upon every city, in every nation. Father, turn on your light. Let every imposter be clearly seen in the name of Jesus. Lord, let these charlatans, Lord, let these wolves in sheep clothing be identified, be recognized, Lord God, and be known. And Lord, deliver your people from these kinds of people in the name of Jesus. Deliver your people, Holy Ghost, in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah now we want to focus on these balaam prophets the balaam prophets the p-r-o-f-i-t-s now let's get a few things about balaam so that we can shine some light upon this wolf in sheep clothing the book of Numbers chapter 22, you will find the story of Balaam. One king by the name of Balak summoned Balaam. And he summoned Balaam to curse the children of Israel. Yes, because he was afraid of the Israelites. They knew what the God of Israel did to the enemies of Israel. And I pray tonight that God will arise on your behalf and your enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus. Wherever your enemies are located. Listen, there are two groups of enemies. Eh? There is a set of enemies that are just jealous. They don't seek to kill you. They don't seek to destroy you. They're just jealous of you. And they will talk all kinds of bad things about you. But then there is another group of enemy. These ones will try to destroy you. They will try to kill you. They will try to assassinate you. They will try their very best to put out your light. Well, suffer not a witch to live. Ha. Suffer not a witch to live. Those ones, eh? you have to discern who they are. Jesus prayed for Peter, but he left Judas to hang. Listen to me, somebody. You better know the difference between those who just have a weakness and, Joe, and those who are looking to destroy your life. You better know the difference. 
the ones who are looking to destroy your life. You don't play around with those ones because the moment they get an opportunity, they will gut you like a fish. Let me tell you that. They will gut you like a fish. Yeah? So those are not people to play around with. There are, there are, there are, there are passages in the word of God that handle those kinds of enemies. Don't think that you are more than God. You are not more than God. If God deals with certain kinds of enemies by obliterating their existence out of the earth, who are you to be playing around with people who want to take off your head? Listen, go and learn wisdom and cry out to the almighty God. There are some enemies you do not play around with. You have to ensure that they are as far away from you as the east is from the west. Some people will not like us for that because they have a pacifist mentality. Well, too bad for you. Yeah, but we will not stand up and let the enemy take off our head and we have not yet accomplished anything for the living God. What good am I to God dead? No, his glory must come into the earth through my life. And until I have finished my course and kept the faith, Mighty God, I am not ready to go home and nobody will send me home before my time. Why should you die before your time? So we are going to talk tonight. We are talking about those who want to employ wicked people to destroy your life. Now let's look at Balaam. Let's look at Balaam. Now Balaam had a prophetic gift or a spiritual gift. Let me use the term spiritual gift. I'm not going to use the term prophetic gift. To, this, to, to describe these Balaams. They have a spiritual gift. Now they have a spiritual gift, but they don't have no character. They have gift, but no character. Numbers, 20, Numbers 22, chapter 22, verse 5. The Bible said he sent messengers unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I want that he whom thou blessed is blessed and he whom thou cursed is cursed. Now let's go a little bit further. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam and spoke to him. Now, listen. If an individual can go to another individual to ask you to pray, to put a curse, oh Jesus Christ, on somebody, on you, that's not somebody to play around with. And that person actually took the money to put curse on you. Took the gift to put curse on you. Do you know that there are some people who are like that? They just want to hear you say something. And they will put a curse. Oh, Jesus have mercy. They will pray hellfire on your head. They will pray that you drop down dead and you fall down and die and all kinds of evil things come to you. Listen, those people are not people to play around with. They are not people to play around with at all. Do you know that Balaam, oh Jesus, I think it was Caleb. When Caleb was going to take the mountain, if I'm not mistaken, that it was at that time that they killed Balaam. The Bible said that Joshua killed him. Joshua ensured that Balaam died because he did some things that caused death in the camp of Israel. You do not play around with such people. They have no character. They, they, and if the money is good, they will do it. And there are some people like that in the church. They have spiritual gift. And let me tell you, if the money is right, they will go in fasting and prayer to kill you. Because they don't have any character. 
They can prophesy, but their prophecies are dangerous. Be careful about those people who are always prophesying death and curse and wickedness and evil on other people's head. Be careful about them. They don't have any blessing in their mouth. Listen what Balak said. He said, Balaam, prophet Balaam, I know whoever you curse, is cursed and whoever you bless is blessed. It simply means that there that there is power in the tongue. Don't fool yourself. There is power in the tongue. Don't play around with a spiritual person. There is power in their tongue that whatever they say, it can come to pass because they have access to the spirit realm. They have access to the realm and the dimensions of the spirit so that when they speak, there is some amount of authority in their mouth and either demons will take it up or angels will act on it because they have been given authority or they have been given some kind of spiritual power to orchestrate things in the spirit realm. And so we cannot be slight and we cannot be naive. Many of those who put curse on people, they are doing so out of a spiritual gift. And so we cannot become led astray by people who have prophetic gift. If they have prophetic gift, we need to see spiritual fruit. What is the fruit of their character? If their character does not line up with the fruit of the spirit, no reception. I am locked, not receiving anything. They are blocked from my spirit. I need to know whether or not the character of this individual is the character of Christ. The works of this individual are the works of Christ. Gifts represent ability, but fruit represents character. You can get a gift through a brief impartation, but fruit comes through a slow process of development. Where is the process of their development? Where is the process? It is so easy for them to put curse on you. Why is it so easy? If you are a prophet, for God's sake, why is it so easy to put a curse on somebody? If you claim that you have a gift that will give people access to what they never had access to or bring things into people's lives, that never would have come into their life if not for you. Why then would you want to put a curse on that individual? Are you so eager to see somebody cursed rather than being blessed? Does it make you feel good to see somebody's life going down the drain rather than seeing that individual receive the goodness of God? Be careful. Be careful about the people that you allow to speak into your life. And if you're a prophetic individual, learn to bless. Let me tell you something about blessing. When you bless an individual, that blessing carries on to a thousand generations. When you bless an individual, you're speaking into a thousand years of their life. Come on now. A thousand years. Why wouldn't I want to speak good over people if that's the case? Why wouldn't I want to? But here is the wickedness of this thing. When a curse is released, because demons are so wicked, they will make 10 years look like a thousand.
they will amplify and magnify. There is no curse in the Bible that goes beyond 10 years. Go and read the scriptures. God has put a limit on how far curses can go. The bastard curse is 10 years. Every other curse is, is third and fourth generation, 300 and 400 years. But a blessing is to a thousand years. In other words, God is two times more than the enemy. Why then would I want to bring curses on people's life? Why? Anytime you see an individual who's, who loves to put curse, check their character. Character not good. Character not developed, character not processed, character corrupt, virus present, something wrong. Something is wrong. We're not making any apologies for our statements tonight. Something is wrong. Either you have the character of the spirit or you don't. There's no two ways about it. And an individual was a spiritual gift, but no character will end up doing dangerous things and then sanctify it and say, oh, it is of the Lord. Wrong. Mm -mm. Wrong. And when you call them out on their character, they start to attack you. A true prophet. If you point out something concerning his or her character, that prophet will be quick to go on their knees before God. Because they understand how a little leaven can leaven the whole lump. They understand that you don't leave a cancer, it will spread. And so true prophets are quick to develop and to fix their character. But those who, who don't, listen, they have some corruption inside of them and they love to hug it up. And one of the things that you can note when a person has corrupt character, check how they handle money, check how they deal with money. Let me tell you, money will reveal you. I said money will reveal you. Either the lack of it or the plenty of it. It will reveal you. Take money from people and you will see their true character. Or give them a lot of money and you will see something else. Money reveals people. And so here was Balaam. We didn't know anything about Balaam before this point. And the Bible said that they brought the rewards of divination in their hand. They brought some money. They brought goods. They brought gifts. And that wretch took it. He took it to curse Israel. Well, tonight, anybody who is taking money to curse you, Anybody who is taking gifts to curse you tonight in the name of Jesus, I decree that they will fail. No matter how much money they get, no matter how much gifts they get, no matter how much resources they get, no matter what is promised to them, no matter how many sacrifices, I decree tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that any curse that is paid for upon your head in the name of Jesus that curse has failed. Come on, begin to pray for yourself. There is nobody who will be able to pay to destroy my head. Any amount of money that is being paid to destroy my head, you have failed. For my head is now lifted up above my enemies. You cannot catch my neck to cut it off. The devil is a liar. We rebuke Katabo Satarabagada. Any payment 
against my head, any payment upon my head, any payment upon my life for my life. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that payment. And anybody who is taking that payment in their hand, right now, in the name of Jesus, we command their hands to begin to burn them. We command fire upon their hands right now. We command fire. We command fire in the mighty name of Jesus. I said no money, no resource, no gifts, no goods that is being given for my destruction can work. I decree right now, the Lord of Jesus that has purchased my life today becomes my defense in the name of Jesus. I said the blood of Jesus becomes my defense now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere that my name is being mentioned for curse tonight in the name of Jesus, we cancel such things now. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. I said we cancel it. Come on, begin to cancel, begin to cancel, begin to cancel it in the name of Jesus. No amount of money paid for my head can work. I decree right now, backfire in the name of Jesus. I say backfire in the name of Jesus. I say backfire in the name of Jesus. Any altar that has been employed by virtue of money and the rewards of divination to destroy my life. I say in the name of Jesus, you can never work. I stand with boldness. I stand with confidence in the blood of Jesus Christ that your price cannot repoposaya. Your price cannot take my head. In the name of Jesus, I turn back every arrow. I turn back every bullet. I turn back every sword. I turn back every knife. In the name of Jesus, any curse released against my life, any curse released against my family, any reward that has been paid for my head. In the name of Jesus. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It can never work. Balaam had a spiritual gift, but he had no character. Tonight, I decree that anyone who comes around you claiming to be a prophet, but they have no character, shall be shifted from you. I said they shall be shifted from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number two, false prophets. Balaam prophets. They know God. Balaam prophets know God. Hmm. Let's, let's, let's get to something here. Numbers 22 verse 18. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord. Watch this now. My God to do less or more. <laughs> they know God. He said the Lord, my God. So it simply means that this gift that this man had. is coming from God. But he has become false. Knowing God does not mean they have a relationship with God. There's a big difference. This is what separates the true prophet from the false prophet. We must examine their relationship with the Lord. And this is not hard to do. Because it will be seen in the way they speak. It will be seen in the presence they carry. It will be seen in how they handle and respond to others. It will be seen in, uh, in what their focus in life is. When a prophet has relationship with God, a prophet can enter in and out of the presence of God with ease. It's not difficult. Ease. Ease of access. They know how to access the presence of God. They don't need a, a, a service, a worship service, a church service. They don't, they don't need a, a full orchestra of music and worship singers. No, the, the prophet, my God, he carries the presence. He knows how to access the presence because of relationship. 
a prophet's relationship with God is measured by the extent of love that he demonstrates for God and for God's people. Now hear me very well. Hear me very well. A true prophet is compassionate. Uh oh. I said a true prophet is compassionate. Where is the compassion in the prophets of today? When you have compassion for people, you don't embarrass people. When you have love for people, you don't destroy them. Listen, there's a difference between open rebuke and embarrassment. Embarrassment destroys your life. It causes you to, be, to become small, to become nothing in the eyes of others. Open rebuke brings correction. And it is usually after God has been speaking to you, speaking to you, speaking to you, and you have not been listening. And even when open rebuke comes, it still comes with love. You don't feel the death blow. God is whipping you, but he's still hugging you. <laughs> Compassion is needed in our prophets today. Some of the things that we see happening on Facebook, on YouTube, does not fit the bill of compassion at all. Some people probably don't know better. But listen, some of them, it's not that they don't know better. They are just not of God, period. A prophet is known by his relationship with God. And that relationship will be demonstrated by how he treats God's people. Where is the compassion? The woman got a prophecy from the prophet. I said, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. Woman never asked the prophet for any son. But prophet said, what can I do for you? Prophet servant said, oh, she don't have any child. Prophet said, okay, by this time next year, son. Then one day the son Fell sick and died. What did the woman do? She took the boy up to the chamber of the prophet, put him on the bed, saddled her donkey, and went to see the prophet. When she was coming to the prophet, the prophet said, is all well? And the woman said, it is well. The prophet didn't say, woman, what are you doing here? Why did you come to disturb me? Don't you know that I'm resting? Who told you where I live? I never invited you to my house. What's your problem? Who gave you my telephone number? Ah, he didn't embarrass her. He didn't do that. He said, it's all well. And by her response, he deserved that something was wrong and sent his servant ahead with the staff. Where is our compassion? People need help. <laughs> Balaam knew of God but he had no relationship with God be careful brethren be careful does the prophet carry a presence that can be validated by his relationship and does his relationship carry a presence We are known for our relationship with God. Now you can tell when a prophet has relationship. When he comes into your midst, when he prays, when he ministers, do you feel the presence of God? Do you feel God's presence around you? 
Because here is the truth. If he's truly a prophet, he carries the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not terror or being terrified. It's an atmosphere of reverence. It's an atmosphere of worship. God is not in the business of terrifying people. It's only one set of creatures God wants to terrify. And that's demons. And they are already terrified of him. But for us, God wants to show himself and to make himself known unto us. That doesn't give us the right to be familiar. What it does is that when we begin to draw closer to God, we become in awe of him. And reverence begins to grow. And the fear of God begins to increase. In fact, the fear of the Lord is one of the seven spirits of God. It's the spirit of worship. Does this prophet carry an atmosphere of worship that when they come into your midst you just want to worship God you just want to reverence God you just want to stay in the presence of the almighty God relationship key it's not in today out tomorrow mm -mm. it's a continuous steady Growth in relationship. Let me tell you something about relationship before I move on. If you are in relationship with somebody, you're not going to always be happy with that person. Hmm. You know why? Because relationship makes you intimate. And I'm not talking about sexual intimacy here. I'm talking about you getting to know the individual. The individual getting to know you. And both of you are trying to become one, to have a synergy. Two divergent personalities trying to come together to be one. Now, our relationship with God is like that. We are two different personalities. And God is the greater personality here. And he is trying to invade us. And we are trying to get into him. There is going to be friction. And there are times when you're going to feel like God is not there. And there are times God is going to feel like you are not there. And sometimes you will quarrel. God, where are you? Are you not speaking to me? Why am I not hearing you? And those are the times when he's dealing with the little bumps and lumps in us so that he can fit better into our heart, into our soul. There will be friction. There will be times he will be quiet. Is it every time you want to talk to the person you love? No, sometimes you just want to be in their presence and say nothing. If you have a relationship, you will experience the highs and lows of it. Elijah had relationship with God. So that God had to come searching for him. Elijah, what are you doing inside here, sir? Of all the places you could come, is you, you come into a cave. A cave, Elijah. <laughs> Sometimes God has to come looking for us in our caves. Because his dealings with us is so rough. 
because we are not fitting the way he wants us to fit. And there are things he has to take out of us. Now, every time that you see a prophet, always have a word. Be careful. Always have a word about people, but never have a word about himself. Be careful. What is your relationship with God doing in your life? It's always about others. It's always about what other people are doing. It's always about the faults of other people. It's always about the issues that other people are dealing with. It's always about other people's problems, other people's faults. But what about you? Are you telling me that your relationship with God never bring you to the point where you see your faults, you see your weaknesses, you see your issues, and you say you're a prophet? You can prophesy out other people's eyeballs, but you don't see the plank in yours. What kind of prophet are you? Where is your relationship with God? Where is it? And so one of our prayers we need to pray is this, Lord, fix my relationship with you. You know why this is important? Because the Bible says my sheep hears my voice. We are prophetic people. We hear God. You don't need a prophet to hear God. You don't. If you have a relationship with the Lord, you will hear him. You will hear him. Lord, fix my relationship with you. Come on. Let's pray that prayer. Lord, fix my relationship with you. I want it fixed. Because sometimes I am vexed with you. Sometimes I am angry with you. Sometimes I don't want to be in your presence because I don't understand what you're doing to me. Sometimes, Lord, to tell you the truth, I, I wish I never made this step. Come on, be honest with yourself. Sometimes you need to be honest. I wish I never made this step. If I knew that this was what this was going to do to my life, I would not have said yes. And you're angry with God secretly. And you don't want this relationship anymore. But because there is nothing better, then you, 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 you stick it out. But you're sticking it out, but you don't really want to be there. You're there, but you don't want to be there. Come on. Lord, fix my relationship with you. Because what? You want the best for me. I know the plans that I have for you, say the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end father fix my relationship with you so that i do not become like a balaam there are a lot of christians who know of god but they don't know god there are a lot of christians that god know But well, guess what? They have no intimacy with him. We can't be like that anymore. We can't be like that anymore. Brethren, let, 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 me, let me hit some things on the head tonight. Having devotion religiously every five o'clock in the morning does not build your relationship with God. <laughs> Because for some of us, it's only religion and ritual. We only just doing it. But here's what builds your relationship. When the word of God begins to work in you and you allow that word to do what it needs to do, your obedience to the word working in your life to conform you to the image of his son 
Have all the devotions you want. Memorize all the scriptures you want. But if it is not doing anything in your character, if it is not doing anything to build your relationship with him, so that when we see you, we see Christ, and when Christ, when God sees you, he sees his son, then all you are practicing is just religion. We need to say it. Who want to be offended, be offended. Who want to be theological, be theological. There are too many Balaam characters. They know of God, but they have no relationship with God. Father, fix my relationship with you. I want it fixed. I want it fixed. And let that relationship be measured by the compassion I have for your people. Where is our compassion? A lot of prophets these days, but my God, they are arrogant. My God, they are pompous. They are proud. They are on pedestals untouchable. You can't get a word with them. So much security that if you ever breach it like the woman with the issue of blood, just know that you gonna get bloody. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We see how people, how these prophets are talking to people. Not even your dog you would talk to like that. Mm -mm. A true prophet is compassionate. I said a true prophet is compassionate. Let me say it again. A true prophet is compassionate. And let me tell you, you cannot fake this. You can't fake it. Either you're compassionate or you're not. You cannot fake this. I'm telling you. It cannot be faked. Because this is a product of your relationship with God. My God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to another point. We're talking about Balaam. Balaam could hear from God and he could communicate with God. <laughs> Listen, don't let prophecies fool you. Many times we ask, how can a false prophet communicate an accurate message? Yes, they can. The truth is that they can access information because of their gift. And God does not take back a gift once it is given. And the gift is a channel of communication like the frequency on a radio. We know how to tune the frequency. We know how to tune it. Every prophet if that person is a prophet, knows what to do to get access to the spirit realm. They know how to tune their frequency so that they can begin to hear stuff. Tune into the right frequency and you will get clear sound. Now, their ability to hear messages does not mean that they will be delivering it from a pure heart. Now, this is the next issue, the heart. The impurity of heart can be detected through discernment because their message will be given with an ear of jealousy, an ear of covetousness. And because of this, instead of the prophecy coming to pass, hear me now, it will act in reverse.
when a prophet who has an impure heart speaks to you a message that is true, that message will be reversed on you. It will not come to pass in your life. In fact, you will go through hell because the heart that is delivering it is not right. <laughs> they are saying one thing with their mouth, but their heart is saying another. Yes, they see you going to the nations, but secretly in their heart, they're praying that your foot will break. They're praying that you'll be locked down. Mm -mm. It will act in reverse. An impure prophetic heart delivering a message to you will become an anti-prophecy. A reversed prophecy. The spirit of the prophet or the spirit of the messenger can affect the outcome of the message if the recipient of that message is not in a right standing with God. I'm talking about the prophetic recipient, meaning the one delivering the message. So it is important for us at all times that we learn the lessons we can learn from Israel and stay under the grace of God's protection. If you remain under grace, meaning remain under the blood, God will protect you. When Balaam saw Israel, they were camped according to the shape of a cross. It was symbolic that they were under the protection of the blood. And so as long as we are obedient to God, under his grace, no curse can take effect on us because the enemy cannot breach the edge of protection around us. We have to develop in this day and age the ability to discern people's heart. And so that's another prayer you need to pray. Lord, help me to discern the hearts of people around me. Help me to discern the hearts of messengers who come to me. I need to know their heart before I open my heart to them. Give me discernment. Because listen, if an individual's heart is not with you, no matter what they say to you, it will not come to pass. It will not. <laughs> it will not come to pass. Listen to me, brethren. Isaac blessed Jacob out of his heart. He was given food to make him feel good, to make him feel nice, to make him feel iry. The prophetic and the, and the realm of emotions are connected. That is why you have to be careful as a prophetic individual, what you speak when you are angry. Because what you say out of the depths of emotion as a prophetic individual will have great effect. If you, and I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> if you want to access the depths of a true prophet's prophetic grace, make him happy. Make her happy. When the prophets in the Old Testament, when you look at the people, when they were going to these prophets, you see them have a gift in their hand. They had something in their hand to bring to the prophet. 
There were two reasons for that. Number one, it was the law of honor. Remember what Jesus said, a prophet is without honor in his own country. That does not mean that if the prophet is in your country, you shouldn't honor him. It means that if you can learn the law of honor, you will access the dimension of miracles. I want you to understand that. If you can learn the law and the principle of honor, you will access the dimension of miracles. That's one of the ways, that's one of the secrets to accessing miracles through the prophet. Second, a gift makes men happy. And if you access the emotions of the prophet in the realm of joy, listen, there is no telling what that person can release on your life. I'm giving you secrets here. I'm giving you secrets. Some of us just want to, oh, he's a prophet. He has prophetic gift. Oh, so prophesy on my life. Maybe nothing will come. But please understand this. If you now go to that same prophet, and I'm not saying that, oh, you should buy a prophecy. That's not what I'm teaching here. I'm teaching the law and the principle of honor. Look at the difference between giving a dollar versus a hundred thousand. What do you think will happen? Let's say that prophetic individual had a need that required 70,000 and you brought 100 to him. What do you think is going to happen? You met the need of that prophet. The prophet out of his spiritual will meet your need. These are laws in the spirit. It's not buying and selling gifts. That's not what it is. That's the realm of divination. But talking about the realm of honor, the law of honor, and the law of access. These are biblical principles that because we don't teach them, people think that when they begin to happen, it is wrong. No, it's the perversion of the enemy that makes these things wrong. And whether or not you bring a gift, yea or nay, it doesn't mean I'm not going to prophesy or give you what God has because the spirit of compassion rules my heart. So I'm not bound to prophesy because of money. I'm bound to prophesy because of the spirit of God and what he has to say. Come on now. So let's understand the difference. Let's know the difference. Prophets hear and communicate from God with God and false prophets can access true information as well. But what we need in this hour is discernment of hearts. What is the person's heart towards me? What is the person's heart towards me? Because a hand whose heart is not with you, instead of a blessing, you are going to get a curse. Oh, Jesus. May we in this hour discern the hearts that are with us. Oh, Jesus. It can't be, brethren, that I am blessing you but behind your back, I'm speaking curses on your head. <clears throat> it can't be that I'm praying for you to be well, but behind your back, I'm saying, I hope you get sick. I hope you don't come out of the hospital. No, 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 no. no. You're a false prophet. It can't be. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, God. That I am shepherding your soul. But I'm withholding from you. 
the goodness of God and the grace of his spirit. No, you're a false prophet. Mm -mm. It can't be. It can't be. What is the heart? And if we pray and if we ask God, Father, show me the hearts of these people. Show me the people whose hearts are with me and those who are not. Listen to me. God will show it to you. He will show it to you. And then you will be wise. Whom you will allow to put hand on you. And who you will allow to speak into your life. Because it is not every mouth that must speak into your life. It is not every mouth that holds the key to unlocking the next level of your destiny. Only those whose hearts are with you can truly access the goodness of God and release it upon your life. Not because they are giving message means that their heart is with you. There are some prophets, brethren, they see some things about you, but they will never tell you because what they see, they deem it too good for you. Oh God. And instead of blessing you, they lock you down. Instead of releasing you, they clip your wings. Instead of helping you, they push you down further. Their heart is not with you. False prophets. Jesus. How quick men can become arrogant. Men can become false. Men can go into error. How quick? Because the spirit of the Lord's character is not with them. In this season, we have to be discerning, brethren. We have to be discerning. And so we are going to pray, Lord, give me eyes to see the hearts of people around me. Give me eyes to see the hearts of those who are speaking over my life and into my life. For I refuse to allow evil hearts to speak into my heart and into my destiny. I refuse it. I block every evil heart from speaking into my life. I block it. I command it blocked now in the name of Jesus. I decree no anti-reversal prophecy will work in my life. No curse will be spoken into my life. In the name of Jesus, every evil heart that exists around me now be exposed. Now be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I expose every evil heart. Every evil heart is now exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. False prophets, they have a spiritual gift, but no character. False prophets, they know of God, but they have no relationship with God. False prophets, they can access information, but their heart is not pure. Those are three areas to identify false prophets. By the grace of God, next week, we will go into a little bit more. In Jesus' name, amen.